of the Georgia Stormwater Management Manual or the GSS, GSMM Stormwater Quality Site Development Review Tool. This tool was developed in conjunction with the 2016 GSMM update with input from ARC, EPD, and the Center for Watershed Protection. My name is Kat Gerd. I'm a Water Resources Project Manager at ACOM, and we're the firm that developed the 2016 GSMM update and the development review tool. So what is the development review tool? Well, it's an automated tool. Uh, it's an automated Excel spreadsheet, and it's supposed to assist uh, designers and developers um, in incorporating runoff reduction and water quality retirement requirements into their site development plans. It should also assist local jurisdictions with a review of those plans, and it provides a visual to show if runoff reduction or water quality, if the water runoff reduction or water quality standard was met. Um, this tool did exist with the previous version of the GS GSMM, but the current version was updated in 2016 to be consistent with the manual, manual updates. Uh, at that time, it incorporated the runoff reduction standard. It updated the available list of BMPs. It provided some additional flexibility for local requirements, um, and it, and it uh, added in the, the conservation um, area or conservation easement protections. There is a user manual that's available for the GSMM uh, tool. It's available on uh, the Georgia Stormwater website, so georgiastormwater.com, uh, where you'd get your Georgia Stormwater Management Manual. You can go here and find the site development user uh, manual and the tool itself. Now, when you download the tool, it will be in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, the Excel spreadsheet is going to have multiple tabs across the bottom. The first tab in the spreadsheet is the Instructions tab. On this tab, you'll find a general overview and guidance on the inputs and how just generally how to use the tool. The next tab is going to show you kind of a flowchart of how the tool works. What this flowchart says is you fill out your general project information. Now, outside of the tool, there's going to be some additional information that you have to take to calculate. You'll need to delineate your pre-developed and post-developed basins. You'll need to look at your soils uh, and also your land cover. Once you have those things, you can input them into the tool, and the tool is going to help ca calculate a uh, weighted curve number for you uh, and, and estimate that from, uh, from the information that you put into the file. Um, also, if you put in your, your runoff reduction storm event, it's generally going to be an inch uh, for our manual. It's going to calculate both that runoff reduction volume and the water quality volume uh, standard for your project site. The tool will also let you select BMPs and apply them to the basin. We'll zoom more into that in a second, um, but it'll tell you with your BMPs selected or your treatment train um, if you're going to meet your runoff reduction and water quality uh, goals for the site. We'll step through some of these uh, some of these worksheets and what they'll look like. We're going to start on the summary uh, summary tab of your workbook. On this tab and on all the tabs in your worksheet, anything that's a green cell. Uh, it's going to be an input cell. Cells that are gray, they're going to be self-populated. So what, what that means is it's going to pull data from another place that maybe you've entered it in a separate tab. If you see some peach cells, we see those at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, these are to com be completed by your site reviewer, so someone with your local issuing authority. Um, and then on the summary worksheet, we're going to enter the general information, that top box in the spreadsheet. It's got your name of your developer, your development name, your site location and address, the development type, that's a pull down list. You need your submittal date, your permit number, the developer contact, phone number, the name of the engineer, and who's going to perform long term maintenance on, uh, on that site. Uh, when you enter the development name, into the spreadsheet, it's going to self-populate that, that information on all of your drainage basin worksheets moving forward. The next tab in the book uh, or in the workbook is going to be RR underscore TSS removal percentage. Now this table is going to have some of the standard removal rates from the GS, GSMM. Um, it'll also have some information um, on, on BMP uh, selections. You'll see there's a, a chart that says drainage area restrictions, and it's got a unit, and it'll tell you whether it's a minimum or a maximum drainage area. That can be used for your BMP screening. So some of these BMPs will only work for drainage, drainage basins up to five acres, but maybe if you have something that is, uh, is, is supposed to uh, 
um, stay wet, you might need a larger drainage area for it. So, so pay attention to uh, the size and that min-max threshold. I'm going to zoom in to just another portion of the spreadsheet. You'll see most of these cells are yellow. Yellow means it's pre-populated data or standard data. Uh, there are a few places where you can put in self-populated data, though. Those are those green cells. Um, so if we look here, we see that a multi-purpose detention basin, that's going to be a facility that's designed primarily for another purpose, like a rooftop, a sports field, or a parking lot. Um, in the GSMM, those do not have a standard TSS removal percentage, but uh, with, some, with some engineering, uh, they can provide some of that control, but that's going to be up to the engineer to determine how much TSS removal they get from those. So that is a green cell for uh, designer input. Also, there's a place for proprietary systems and rainwater harvesting. So if you're, uh, if you're doing a, a, a BMP that's not a standard BMP in the Green Book um, or in the, in, the, in the GSMM, there is a, a place where you can put that in and put those credits in and use that, that BMP within the tool. Next, we're going to move to the drainage basin worksheets. Uh, the tool is set up with 10 drainage basin worksheets. Uh, so each drainage basin is going to get its own sheet. Um, on, on that sheet, you're going to name your drainage basin. When you put in the name, that's going to self-populate back into that summary tab. So we see here on the bottom half of the screen, uh, it shows a snapshot of that site summary. It lists all the drainage basins, 1 through 10. When you put in your drainage basin name, it's going to, it's going to actually add that drainage basin name instead of saying uh, drainage basin 1 through 10. Now. To complete your drainage basin worksheets, you'll need to have completed some of that basic information on your own. You'll need your drainage basins delineated for pre and post. You'll need your hydrologic soil group, A, B, C, or D, and you'll need your land cover. But with these inputs, the tool is actually going to create that weighted curve number for each basin for you. Uh, it's also gonna calculate the total impervious area. It's gonna calculate your volumetric runoff coefficient. Now for your land cover. Um, the tool is split down, it has a pull down menu, and it's got the standard NRCS TR55 cover types there. But there's also an area, it says local jurisdiction input. If you have a cover that's something unique to your site or something you, uh, unique to your jurisdiction, you can also put in self input values there. So you can put in that, that, uh, that spe special cover type um, and then add in what those curve numbers are for that, for that associated cover. Now, on each drainage basin worksheet, the user can also add in conservation credits. So below that, um, below that uh, curve number area that we just looked at, there's going to be a conservation area credit box. There's four types of conservation credits. You have natural conservation areas, site reforestation or revegetation, soil restoration, or a combination. And if your site's using any one of these credits, you check the box on, um, in, in the tool for the applicable credit. And then once that box is checked, it's going to unlock a green box below it. Uh, in that green box, you're going to put in the acres that is associated with that credit. Now, volume two of the GSMM has more information on each of these credits. Um, so I encourage you to, to look there if you need additional information about how these credits are used. Now, when you apply a conservation area credit, you may have to supply additional information to your, uh, your jurisdiction. So when you, when you uh, put in one of those credits, it is going to provide a pop-up note in red on that summary tab. You can see here, it says a recorded conservation easement or similar form of protection is required for this project. So when you print out this, um, this, uh, this summary uh, sheet, it's going to remind them uh, to ask for that additional backup information. Moving back to the drainage basin worksheet, um, after you go through your, your construction area credits, it's gonna give you a site summary of your water quality goals for the basin. Now, when we look at water quality and runoff reduction, um, those are gonna be judged on a project by project base, basis, uh, not on a basin by basin basis. However, we are going to show you that data in the tool because you can uh, have a good indication of whether you're making progress towards your site goals by looking at how you're doing on an individual basin basis. So in the site summary, you'll see here, um, if we've applied for any of those conservation credits, it's going to reduce that, that area from the total site area for the water quality volume. 
So um, if we had a, a two acre conservation credit and our total site area was 6.5 acres, you see here it's calculating that new uh, area for water quality as 4.5 acres. Below the water quality goals on the drainage basin worksheet, you're going to have an opportunity to select the BMPs that you're placing within that drainage basin. For each BMP, uh, the designer will need to input the area draining to the BMP. Now these BMPs, they can be set up as individual BMPs that are serving portions of your drainage basin. They can also be set up as a treatment train. So to set them up as a, a treatment train, there's a column that says downstream BMP and you'll select which BMP is going to follow that one in the list, and that's going to turn it into a treatment train for us. Uh, the worksheet, it's, um, it's going to automatically calculate our water quality and our runoff reduction uh, targets for the basin. A little more on treatment trains or adding in multiple BMPs. So the user, uh, you can add multiple BMPs per basin again. Uh, you select whether or not it's a treatment train by connecting that BMP to a downstream BMP. Uh, but you can also just have multiple BMPs that are serving a different area of, of the same drainage basin. So it can be set up either way. Um, if the outflow from one drainage basin or a portion of the drainage basin flows to another basin, the basin should be analyzed in one worksheet. So what that means is uh, we, 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 you would basically lump those two drainage basins together. If you do that, you need to name your basin accordingly and then provide any comments necessary in order to, to uh, communicate that drainage path to your planner viewer. A few more notes on the drainage basin worksheet. Per the GSMM, uh, you only get, get to credit the on-site area you're treating. So you see here uh, for the area draining to the BMP, there is a column for off-site area. Uh, you can put that in there and it will show the flow going to that BMP, but that's not going to factor into your runoff reduction and water quality calculations. Also, the tool doesn't size your BMP for you. Uh, you have to do some calculations on your own, and then what you do is take the volume of the BMP and you'll input it into the storage volume provided column. The volume will then be used to assess the water quality and the runoff reduction achieved uh, for that BMP for that basin. Now the final calculation on the drainage basin worksheet is gonna be the channel and flood protection. Uh, for this calculation, you'll be asked to enter the target rainfall event in inches. You'll see you have those green cells again, so those are user input cells. Um, you'll see here we have some sample values that are in input. These come from uh, NOAA. So there's actually a link to, uh, to NOAA in Appendix A of the GSMM. You click on that link, find the, uh, the area closest to your project site, and find uh, the, the particular design storms that you need to enter here. You enter a one-year 24-hour storm, a two-year 24-hour storm, 25-year 24-hour storm, and a 100-year 24-hour storm. Once you enter those rainfall totals, uh, your, your, the, the tool will calculate the runoff volume in inches for those different storm events. And it's also going to have a uh, post-development runoff with uh, uh, calculated with no BMPs. And then finally, it'll give you an adjusted curve number. That adjusted curve number uh, takes the, the weighted curve number for your site and actually takes into consideration the runoff reduction that you get from your BMPs and, and kind of adjusts that weighted number. Now, after you input all of that information in your individual drainage basins, it will populate back into this summary worksheet table. Uh, we see here, we have again that list of drainage basins one through 10. Uh, once you've completed the tool, you know that'll, that will populate and fill out for um, all the basins in your site. And then this site summary worksheet is going to give you your total runoff reduction and total water quality volume for the site. It'll also tell you whether or not you, you met your reduction goals. Um, this is the, uh, the, the final summary page that would be uh, printed out and turned in with your project when you go for permitting. Um, you're probably going to also want those, those drainage basin sheets as well, but this is your nice site summary. It's going to give you a visual graphic of your runoff reduction and your total suspended solid removal on a project level. And that's it for our review, overview. We hope this was helpful. Uh, please let me know if you have any remaining questions. My contact information is available on the slide. Thank you.